Hi, welcome to Macintosh Librarian Labs. Today we have an exciting new addition to the library. And this is going to be adding to my awesome 3D printer farm that I've been growing here in the studio. I have with me a brand new Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. And this was ordered by Mackie, who went online and ordered a bunch of 3D printers, and including this one and some Flash Forge Adventure 3s and a Flash Forge Adventure 4. We are definitely expanding our 3D printing capabilities here in the lab. This is an awesome 3D printer that allows us to print multiple materials at once and it has all these neat features like automatic bed leveling using lasers, vibration dampening, multiple materials. So I wanted to use today's episode of Macintosh Librarian Labs to go a little bit in a departure from talking about Macintoshes and talk about some more labs focused things. So let's get to it. Let me open this box. Got this knife. Wow. Wow. On the bag. So there's a little sticky here and tells me to pull it on the back to lift it up. So I'm going to probably have to put this on the ground because I'm too short and I can't get it. So let's put this on the ground. It says team lift for safety. Let's see. I'm a team. Okay, so now we're on the ground here at the Macintosh Library. Let's pull this bamboo carbon out of the box using my nerd muscles. Hopefully it doesn't crack and smash everywhere. <laughs> cool. Work. There you go. Bamboo. So while I'm opening it up, let me tell you a little bit about why I bought this printer and what enticed me to spend $1,500 on a 3D printer. The history with Kate and 3D printing in the Macintosh library and 3D printing all stems from me buying one of the first uh, cheap mass marketable 3D printers, which was the Creality CR10, which boasted a 300 by 300 millimeter bed. And so that was a very large 3D printer. It was $350 or $400 when I first bought it. And it was an awesome little machine. But like I said, it's kind of an old machine. I think I bought it in 20. 16 or so and I've gone through four power supplies, two or three different hot ends, countless numbers of nozzles, and different trying different beds to get things to stick, trying different z-axis, doing upgrades, doing modifications where I had two z-axis, two separate motors. I wanted to spend more time printing in less time fiddling with a 3D printer. So in order to get a printer where I don't have to be fiddling as much, you have to pay a little bit extra. And that's where this bamboo lab X1 Carbon comes in, where it's a very nicely designed aluminum chassis 3D printer designed by engineers that were once working for DJI, which is how the marketing spins it as like, well, these guys know their stuff. I wanted an enclosed machine that I didn't have to construct from a build of materials. And I wanted a ready to go nice machine that can support multiple materials. And when you start looking at some of the options available for multiple materials, you get into things like IDEX, which is multiple extruders. And there was, some, there was a printer that I was considering getting that was, I think, the Flash Forge ooh, Creator 3 or Creator, Creator 3 or Creator 2. Sorry for the noise. But when I was looking at new printers, I came across this guy and it was being touted as a Kickstarter, which I was like, oh, that's awesome. This is a cool concept. But coming in as a Kickstarter from a company you've never heard of made me a little hesitant at first. But I started watching all the YouTubers online, all the big 3D printing talking heads like Joel from 3D Printing Nerd, the 3D Printing Professor. They were all talking about this X1 Carbon and how it's literally a game changer in the 3D printing space, at least the home 3D printing space. So we're talking about orders of magnitude uh, of speed that we can print up compared to what we were able to print out before. And it supports a automatic material management system or the AMS that allows us to easily print with multiple materials. You can use up to 16 materials at once, so you can make models with 16 colors. Potentially, if you choose to buy multiple of these AMS little models that sit on top of the unit. And that's totally optional. You don't have to buy an AMS, but I wanted to level up my 3D printing game and wanted to move to a system that supported colors, multiple materials, because I was that the level of 3D printing I wanted to get at is producing figures and products of Mackie and Tui and Jesse 
and make some nice cute little earrings and jewelry and stuff for all you nerds out there and little desk doodads and I wanted to avoid having to paint things and I wanted it to be a nice self-contained manufacturing system. But inside the box you'll see the AMS system and it's nestled snugly in here. Let me see if we can get it out. Let's take out all these other bits and bobs first so that we can get this printer set up. This is a ready to go printer, but just the way it's packed, there's some shipping screws that have to be undone. And that requires us to take out all the stuff that's inside. And let me just get you a good look at what I'm talking about. So see right here, this is the automatic material system or the AMS. So this is where the spool goes and it ends up sitting on top of the whole printer. I wanted to get a printer that was ready to go out of the box that required little maintenance and this just happened to come out at the right time when I was shopping for 3D printers and looking to expand my printing capabilities. Wow. Like I said, this is aluminium chassis with a nice glass, near the glass door on the front. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited to print out some multiple material things. And just for a little preview of what I'm talking about. So for my patrons, I've been printing out these little Mackies, which are a cute little facsimile of our AI friend, Mackie. And these are perfect little toys. Kids love to play with them and they're nice little desk toys to have. They just sit there and they're a good 3D model. They're designed by my friend Jess. She's a 3D artist and just general awesome person and awesome artist. So I'll post her details down in the description for the video. But she's helped me make some of the 3D assets that you may have seen in my videos. And these are one of them. And so these are little goodies that I like to give away. She also designed this Apple IIe with the Duo Disc floppy drive. And what this is going to be is the TUI model. So I built a TUI and a Mackie that will eventually be delivered to my patrons. The AMS, which is a spool holder here, is actually screwed down for shipping purposes so that things don't rock around and rattle. So let's go get a screwdriver and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And I have a nice little screwdriver that will allow us to take out the AMS. So let's get on our Phillips head screw and see what's here. They're happily identified by these little bright orange arrows right here. My head is in the way. Cool. AMS is free. Let's get back here and I'll pull it out. Ta -da. So this is what will sit on top of the 3D printer. Okay, so there's some screws inside that I need to get rid of. So we've already taken off those AMS screws, but there's some screws on the inside of this plate that I will have to undo to get it open and to get out I guess it's called the AMS carrier or the AMS cushioning. So let's see what's here. There it goes. Cool. So I got out this little AMS holder guy. I'll put that to the side. First, so let's go ahead and open this up. So here's the little bamboo screen right here. Let's take off the tape. That's another thing I like about these more modern 3D printers is that they have nice creature comforts and accoutrement, such as this screen. So you have a little screen that can act as your little controller for all your stuff. So the way you do it is put the wire in, push it in, slide it to the left. Okay. So let's connect. So the back of the screen looks like that. And then you plug it in. You just got to make get sure it goes in until it clicks. And you push it in and slide it to the left. There you go. Screen is in. So now that we got the screen on, it's time to get the AMS set up. And all this work is going to be on the, the back of the machine. So let's turn it around. 
So here in the back, we have our, this is our filter fan. So it's, I think it's carbon filter and possibly HEPA. I will check that and I'll put a little word right here that says HEPA or not. This is its little filament pooper where it poops out excess filament after it changes colors, it extrudes a little purge. So this is our like purge chute. This is our Bowden tube and this is where we're gonna connect our AMS system up to. So let's go ahead and pull out the AMS, which is right here and take off some of this plastic look that this thing's got going on. To me, it reminds me of, I don't know, like a DeLorean or something with its nice, this is not stainless steel, but you know, aluminum chassis, very Mac-esque. So yes, got the AMS right here in all its beautiful glory, the AMS, wow. So the AMS that's on top. So let's get the glass cover back on that I moved out of the way earlier and let's take off the plastic. Okay, so the lid. Okay, so then the AMS sits just right on top like a little hat. And then we have to manage the Bowden tube. So let's take off this tape. And according to the instructions, at least, first let's connect the Teflon tube to this little guy right here. It has another fitting. We just push it in and pull it back out to make sure it's snug and it's good. And then we use what they call the bamboo bus cable. And we will use the bamboo bus cable, which is a little six pin connector that we have right here. So one bamboo bus cable has a nice cute right angle to it. Let's see which one's longer. The one's really short. So. Cool. Okay, so this one must go here. And then this one goes here. And this goes up to here. Cool. So now there's a spool holder assembly. We're not going to do a spool holder assembly since we have this little hat. The AMS, not the hat. Let's see what they gave us in this egg crate package. Ah, glue stick. And this kind of acts as like a sacrificial layer, so to speak. So you make your layer of glue on the bed, then you put your part on, and then when it's done, you can easily remove it. So this helps with removal, not stiction, just removal. Some hot end parts. I think it came with an extra hot end. Let's see what's on there right now. Yep, it came with an extra hot end, so that's cool. Yeah, that's what this little note says here, essentially is, warning, users must use a glue stick or else the print may adhere too strongly to the fresh build plate and could cause severe damage to the plate. So that's what it says. So yes, that is the reason why we need glue stick. I personally love PEI sheets as my build material. I think there may be a third party that makes PEI sheets or you can get one cut in the 256 by 256 size that this one uses. I'm sure that's already out there. It's probably similar to an existing 3D printer but I wanna keep it stock right now and I'll mess with it later. But first let's see how it runs. So I need to open up the AMS and take out some desiccant. So let's bring the camera around and I will show you what I'm doing back here. <laughs> okay, so here is the front of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And on top we have the AMS. So that's where we put our four filament spools in on the top. Right now it's empty. This is my vantage point from over here. So we have the these little desiccant pack containers that are right here that I need to remove before we begin our printing adventure. So let me go ahead and do that. And then we can get into printing. You're guessing, oh, why do you need to take the desiccant out? It's wrapped up in plastic so that it doesn't get and moisture in it. So we need to open it up so that the desiccant can actually hit some air and start absorbing some of that sweet moisture. All right, so for our first roll of filament in the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, I'm gonna be using my favorite filament, which is the Polyterra PLA in a muted white, which is a very close approximation to the color of a beige Macintosh in platinum white. And this color was actually found by Joe's Computer Museum, so JCM1. He color matched it really close and I contacted Polymaker and they kindly produced 
this and now it's available on Amazon. So this color of beige PLA is a very close approximation to the beige of a platinum white Macintosh. So let's use this. And this is what I'm printing a lot of my Mackies and cool stuff with. So let's open up the AMS and load it up. So first we have to turn on the printer and then it'll load up the filament. So I'll put it right here. Let's get the printer turned on and we will see what happens. So it's plugged in right now. I think all the foam is out except for underneath the bed. So let's see what goes on when I turn it on. Let's take off this little screen protector. Nice. And let's turn it on up here. Oh, it was on. So now it's off again. I'm English. Okay, this is Wi-Fi, secret Wi-Fi information. Okay, so while you're getting this set up, there's a little barcode that shows up on the printer and that's how you sync it with this app called Bamboo Handy. I'll post it on screen because right now my camera's not focusing, but Bamboo Handy is how you connect to this printer remotely and manage the printers and do all kinds of fancy stuff like remote management, stopping printers and getting notifications on spaghetti, things like that. Since it has a camera on the hot end, has a camera inside, it, it knows when things are going on. Cool. So now that I took a picture of the QR code, it's going to link my printer to my Bamboo Handy app on the phone. Now the printer is hooked up to the Bamboo Handy app. And I have my user on here. I'll click next. I accept the terms and conditions. The printer will need to calibrate for the current environment. Please ensure the hotbed is unlocked. So it's unlocked. So let's click next. Calibrate. Now it will home the tool head. So now it's homing the tool head. It's, I think now is where I need to move the foam out of the way. Cool. Now it's vibrating at different frequencies. And I think what it's doing is it's calculating the anti-vibration. So right now it says it's sweeping XY mech mode. So I'm gonna make music with this thing. Okay, calibration complete. So let's see where we're at here. So and now it says that calibration is complete and to make sure that the desiccant is removed and that I remove the foam from the hotbed. And it is all out, a little bit of crumbly of foam. And then it does say, ask me to start printing, but I have not put any glue stick on it yet. So let me go ahead and do that before we start printing. So the filament is in the AMS, as you can see up here. It's not pushed in anything, it's just sitting there. We'll see if it works. Ah, new firmware, yes, please. Update the firmware, yes. So there's a pre-built Benchy file in here. It says it'll take 24 minutes. And so let's do that. Using PLA, using AMS, full calibration, let's print it now. Okay, so now it's telling you which steps it's going through. Let's zoom camera into it. So it tells you all the steps that it's doing. Preparing the hotbed, it's heating the nozzle up. Now it's moving. Ah, it's happening. There it goes. And now it's heating the hot end. Ah, you can see it pooping out filament back there. He's pooping filament out in the back. Now it's printing some test lines. Now it's cleaning the nozzle. Oh my God. Now it's making crazy noises. Auto bed leveling. So now it's doing auto bed leveling using the LiDAR sensors and everything. Auto bed leveling is done. Now it's gonna sweep XY mech mode. Now it's printing the first calibration layer. It's calibrating the extrusion. Now it's reading those lines with its LiDAR sensor. Okay, so now it's going to start printing the Benchy. 
inspecting the first layer and that is a beautiful first layer I mean I'm inspecting it that's awesome wow and there it goes wow okay this printer is so fast it's crazy I was trying a little spoot on the top. I think it's called. And there you go. One Benji done and not that much time at all. I think that turned out pretty good. I mean, for considering how fast it went. 24 minutes, okay. So the printer says 24 minutes, so that's really fast. So let's check it out over here. So we have a pretty good looking little Benchy for 24 minutes and for just unboxing this printer and getting it plugged in and putting in filament and you print very detailed images or images, very detailed models like this Benji right here. There is a little bit of ringing right here around the circle, but again, I did put it on sport mode just because I wanted to push this 3D printer a little more. Yeah, and the seams are awesome, but yeah, there's no stringing, there's no overhang issues whatsoever. Usually you get a little bit of some drooping here. You can see a little bit, but it's really good. This would have taken an hour and a half to print on my CR10 or my Flash Forge Adventure 3 or 4s, but of course those are significantly cheaper than the X1 Carbon. So what we're talking about here, there's at least how I like to think of things with technology in general and 3D printers that applies very well, is you can do things cheap, you can do things fast, and you can do things with good quality. And usually you say you can only do two of those things, right? You do it cheap and with quality, well, it's going to take a lot of time. If you do it fast and with quality, it's going to take money. And this machine is very expensive. It costs as much as a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio, but you're getting a... I don't know, like an Apple level of quality in the plug and play ability of this printer. And I'm very happy to have it in the lab. And I'm very excited to get going with four different filaments that we could put inside the AMS. Right now we're only working with the one beige filament, but it can be easily expanded to four. And if I get another AMS, we can even go to eight and maybe even 16, but I think that's a little, that might be a little overkill for me, to be honest. I think four is probably where I will keep it right now. Maybe do eight in the future so I can do the stripes for the apple rainbow and print complete models that have rainbow design in them. I think that would be really cool. That way I don't have to paint it. I don't have to worry about using decals or vinyl stickers or anything like that I've made. So yeah, this is a really awesome toy. <laughs> and I just wanted to give you a little glimpse into what I've been doing. And also I need to talk about this next part right here. Oops. So you might ask Ms. Fox, why do you need a 3D printer? And I love to 3D print things. And here in this box, we have a bunch of Mackies. So these are not Mackies yet, but I'm going to be printing out the face decals and putting them onto these models. So right here I have about uh, 80 Mackies or so. So I'm gonna give these away to my Patreon. But I know some people have been asking me about my Mac earrings and I have some other models that I think would be cool. And I'll get with Jess to make some new models for Jesse and some other characters that are coming down the pike and also some other Mac projects that I have in mind. So yeah, I think this printer with its speed and its multicolor abilities will be an awesome addition to the lab. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye everyone, see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>